now stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Bat and the Bottle. Colonel Bleep and the High Command review the grim reports once more. Four flying saucers from Venus, lost in collision with a giant space bird. Six Martian cruisers, wrecked in a headlong plunge into a swirling sea of liquid air. And three cargo ships from Jupiter, lost forever in a raging space storm. High Command agree these terrible space flight accidents must be stopped. But how? Colonel Bleep proposes a daring plan. With a giant, specially equipped rocket ship of his own design, Bleep insists he can survey the many hazards of the universe and produce a map. A space map which would accurately chart the location of every danger zone in the galaxy. And so, Bleep, Squeak, and Scratch proceed at once to the planet Robot Land. Only the skilled robot engineers of this strange mechanical world are capable of constructing the great rocket ship, Travel Lab. Now in Factory City, as the master robot, Romex, guides the movements of his robot workers, the great rocket begins to take shape on the busy assembly line. At last, the fabulous traveling laboratory is ready. Ready to blast off on its first flight at dawn tomorrow. But already, Dr. Destructo has a plan. A plan to destroy the great ship with this bottle of powerful liquid futomic dynamite Destructo intends to blast the travel lab to smithereens. Quickly, Villain fastens a message to the bottle. Then calls his giant vampire bat to deliver the deadly parcel. Away it streaks, straight for Factory City. At dawn, when Bleep and his friends rush out to test their new rocket, they spot the mysterious package. For luck to christen the travel lab, find a friend. Of course, every new rocket ship should be christened. But wait, Squeak, don't use that bottle. Sizzling Saturn, that's the very bottle Destructo filled with a powerful liquid futomic dynamite. It will blow them all to cosmic dust. Stop, Squeak! Don't do it! It's too late. Squeak is ready to christen the travel lab. Gleefully, Destructo and his wicked bat watch the awful scene. The puppet takes aim, and there it goes. But nothing happens. Destructo is amazed. For how can he possibly know his carrier bat had guzzled down every last drop of the liquid dynamite on its long flight to Factory City? Or that the beast standing beside him now is filled with the deadly explosive? But the angry Destructo isn't waiting for explanations. The bat is to blame for the failure of his plan. And now he grabs the terrible creature and twirls him around his head, then sends it crashing at his feet. Yes, the travel lab rocket was saved. A 
of a thirsty bat and an empty bottle. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Colonel Bleach's arrival on Earth. Colonel Bleach. Interplanetary intelligence agent for the planet Futura had completed another dangerous mission. That arch criminal, Dr. Destructo, had at last been captured and was at this very moment a prisoner in a space bubble securely anchored in the outer ring of the planet Saturn. And now the Futuran High Command had ordered Colonel Bleep on a new assignment, a top secret mission to investigate reports of disturbances on worlds of outer space, the distant planet Earth in particular, to observe its places, people, and customs. It was therefore only a few days later that the giant telescope at Mount Palomar Observatory first gave news to people of Earth of Colonel Bleep's approach. The powerful lenses focused on this curious visitor from the outer world as he flashed past the planets Uranus and Neptune and then rapidly span the empty space towards our own planet, Earth. Actually, the people of Futura had only recently become interested in Earth. To Futurans, the Earth was only a small planet revolving around the minor sun of the Milky Way galaxy, and hardly worth investigation under ordinary circumstances. However, on July 16, 1945, they had observed what appeared to be an atomic explosion on the Earth's planet. As time went on, Futuran futonic radar scopes recorded an increase in the number and fury of these explosions. And in the Earth's stratosphere, even the rocket trails of guided missiles were observed. To Futuran, these were signs of trouble. Trouble in space. And trouble anywhere in space is the concern of the Futura Interplanetary High Command. And so, Colonel Bleep has arrived. <laughs> And the exciting adventures of his new secret mission are about to begin. With Colonel Bleep are two unusual companions to share his exciting adventures. First, there is Squeak, a happy-go-lucky boy of the present, very much like you. Except that Squeak is a puppet and cannot speak a single word. Because, as you all know, a puppet cannot talk for himself. But Squeak is filled with curiosity, as all boys are. And you all know the trouble curiosity can often bring about. Second, there is Scratch, an expert on the past, who, like other cavemen, should really have become extinct several thousand years ago. But Scratch fell asleep. And slept right through the evolution of man, and didn't wake up until that first atomic explosion. Blew him right out of the past and into the present. Scratch, like most cavemen, is sometimes a trifle slow at catching on. But when danger threatens, Bleep and Squeak can depend on quick action from Scratch and his trusty club. As they shall be. So here they are, three very strange companions. Colonel Bleep <laughs> of the future. Squeak of the present. And Scratch of the distant past. Together they travel up, down, backwards or forwards, in distant or in time. Together they face danger and death as they fight to maintain right and justice throughout the vast galaxies of the world.
And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... space, on a tiny ocean-covered planet, lies the lily pad kingdom of Aqualand. Here, in this beautiful, watery world, live the friendly frogmen, curious inhabitants of this curious land. And far below, in the hidden coves of the ocean floor, these little fellows gather the most priceless gems of the galaxies. For only here, in the secret treasure beds of the frogmen, can be found the precious giant pearls of Aqualand. But no longer is the secret of these rich pearl beds known only to the frogmen. For suddenly, a monstrous shadow looms into view. In sheer terror, the frogmen flee. For this is Octo the Terrible, the blackest, meanest octopus in the sea. Helplessly, the divers watch as this wicked creature carries off load after load of their precious pearls. And so it is that Colonel Bleep, Squeak, and Scratch streak to the aid of the frogmen. Arriving just in time to see the thieving culprit scurry off with the last of the gleaming gems. Following closely, the spaceman and his deputies watch amazed as the monster pours the stolen treasure into the hatch of a waiting submarine. Through a porthole of the sub stare the greedy eyes of Dr. Destructo, the mastermind behind this wicked scheme. Little Squeak tosses his lasso with perfect aim and quickly ropes the terrible Octo out of action. But the evil Destructo has already zeroed in on Colonel Bleak. Fire! One! With a mighty roar, a giant torpedo thunders straight for the curtain. Too late! The spaceman learns his water-soaked atomic energy supply is useless now. Is this the end for Colonel Bleak? How can he possibly escape this terrible fate? But wait! With a mighty leap, Scratch lands astride the deadly missile. In the nick of time, he pulls the rudder, missing the spaceman by only inches. Destructo, now in full retreat, crashes to the surface. But there is no escape. His target scratched leaps to safety. Not one trace of Destructo's submarine remains. Not one clue to the doctor's fate. Only the gleaming pearls could be seen as they settled back once more to the treasure beds of Aqualand. The frogmen gave three rousing for they had witnessed proof indeed that a man's evil deeds like a boomerang have a way of coming back to him
And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Dangerous Holiday. According to Colonel Bleep, the planets of the universe are filled with exciting sights to see. Squeak and Scratch had already visited such unusual places as Aqualand, the watery world of the curious frogmen. And Robot Land, the strange home of the mechanical men who happily work in the great factory city. But now, the puppet and the caveman were to accompany Bleep for a short holiday on the most wonderful world of all, Bleep's own home planet, Futura, land of the future. Of course, Squeak and Scratch were expecting to have the time of their lives on such an exciting journey. But just as they passed through the rings of Saturn, almost halfway to Futura, our three friends were secretly spotted by a bitter enemy, the vicious black knight of Pluto. And so it was that when Bleep and his friends at last reached Futura, they were completely unaware that this cowardly villain was close behind them like an evil black shadow ready to strike when danger was least expected. Upon arrival, Colonel Bleep sped off to visit his fellow officers at the High Command headquarters, leaving Squeak and Scratch free to enjoy the glorious sights of this beautiful land. Their tour started on a vertical car which carried them straight to the top of the tallest Futurian skyscraper. But up ahead, the wicked knight was already prepared to send our sightseeing friends plunging to their doom. Just in time. The space deputies stepped to safety, quite unaware of their narrow escape. Once more, the evil knight strikes. And once again, Squeak and Scratch are unknowingly saved. An exciting ride on a speedy sky train turns out to be wonderful fun. In spite of the culprit's devilish scheme to send them spinning down to their death. Yes, to unsuspecting squeak and scratch, these Futurian rides were even more fun than the roller coaster back home. The Black Knight shook with rage. But then, suddenly, he saw one more chance. For now, our friends had hopped aboard a steer-it-yourself Skyway scooter. The tiny car rolled smoothly along, but just as the puppet and caveman settled back to relax, away they streak. Down they speed as fast as light, then up to a dizzy height. Over, then under, and back again. The speedometer reads 410. The Black Knight roars with laughter. <laughs> For now he is sure Squeak and Scratch are doomed. Look! There they go into a loop-de-loop. -loop. Now here they come again. But wait! The runaway car is empty. It was empty. For now, the wicked knight is caught in his own trap. Away he goes, a million miles beyond the Milky Way. But what has happened to Squeak and Scratch? Well, believe it or not, when the car looped the loop, they were gently transferred to a landing elevator. And there, Colonel Bleep was waiting with a Futurian full flavor ice cream surprise for each of them.
Yes, both Squeak and Scratch agreed that although Futurian ways of travel sometimes seem a trifle strange, the space deputies had never had a more wonderful time. And so it was that the cowardly Black Knight's day truction had turned in to a day of fun for Squeak and Scratch. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Evil Eye. The Wonder Rocket Travel Lab slows to a gentle stop. radar scope. For the first time, Squeak and Scratch peer into the vast expanse of Galaxy 9. Here among colorful planets and glittering stars lies the greatest terror of the space lanes, the deadly sea of liquid air. Only recently, six Martian cruisers plunged into this watery grave. But now, Colonel Bleep has arrived to chart this deadly trap for a space map of the universe. With the exact location known to space pilots, the sea of liquid air will never again be a menace to interplanetary space travel. Down radar scope, proceed on course. To bleep, however, this swirling sea holds even greater dangers. For this is the secret lair of Black Patch and his band of cutthroat buccaneers. At this very moment, the villain's powerful space galleon plows through heavy waves, then stops as the evil captain scans the horizon in search of plunder. Ever be timbers, far she lies. The travel app rocket, pride of the sky. Load the torpedoes and batten the hatch. We'll make her a coffin for bleep, squeak, and scratch. <laughs> Through his giant periscope, the wicked pirate anxiously waits as the unsuspecting colonel guides the traveling laboratory into a deadly ambush. Already, Squeak and Scratch are busy at the charting instruments. Through the Futomic survey scope, the caveman sights the position of a planet to the left of the ocean. Mark one planet to the left. Check. Then across to the other side. Mark one star to the right. Check. And now within the sea itself. Mark one blinking eye dead ahead. Check. Blinking eye? Bleep takes over to see for himself. But there's nothing there at all. Scratch checks again, and there it is, a blinking eye as plain as can be. But Bleep and Squeak are sure Scratch is just seeing things. So the caveman is relieved of duty and sent to his quarters to rest. But he cannot rest. For suddenly, his nose begins to twitch. And that's a sure sign of trouble. Terrible trouble. But what and where? The eye, of course. That mysterious blinking eye. There's no time to lose. No time to explain to bleep and squeak. The caveman must investigate alone. Quickly, he leaps aboard his space scooter and opens the launching tube hatch. But look, it's too late. Torpedo alert! Torpedo alert! Black Patch has struck! Bleep leaps to the controls, but the travel lab is too big to escape. The torpedo zeroes in for the kill. But hold on! 
Scratch has spotted the torpedo. He's diving straight into the path of the missile. He's flipped it over. It's heading back. And now Bleep and Squeak know there really is a blinking eye. Or at least there was. Now stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of Space, three cargo ships from Jupiter wing their way to a distant galaxy. Suddenly, passing the volcanic world of Thor, they're caught in a violent eruption. The ships are gone without a trace. The terrible space storms of Thor have struck again. But now, in the Wonder Rocket Travel Lab, Colonel Bleep, Squeak, and Scratch are on their way to survey and chart the exact position of this treacherous planet on a map, a space map for safer space travel. On his visa screen, the Colonel briefs his crew. Immediately following the next eruption, the Travel Lab will zoom in on Thor. A spray of water from the forward guns will protect the ship from the planet's blazing heat as they make a low altitude run to survey Thor's exact position. But they must speed off to safety before the next space storm erupts. Unknown to Pleep and his crew, however, the wicked Dr. Destructo is already at work on a treacherous plot to send the travel lab to a fiery doom. If this culprit has his way, the spray guns on the colonel's rocket will not be filled with water at all, but with highly inflammable rocket fuel. They will all be lost in a blazing inferno. Now back aboard the travel lab, Bleep spots an approaching space tanker. According to plan, the traveling laboratory will take on the water supply for its spray guns in a mid-space cargo transfer from such a craft. But Bleep is unaware that this spaceship is not the water-carrying tanker. No, indeed, this cargo ship is filled to the brim with highly inflammable rocket fuel, and the pilot is the evil Dr. Destructo himself. Prepare for contact, Travel Lab. Sizzling satellites? This is terrible. Scratch is opening the intake valve on the reservoir tanks. In seconds, they'll be filled with explosive rocket fuel. Don't turn that nozzle, Scratch. Don't do it. Stop. Stop. It's too late. He's turning it on. But wait. What's he doing now? Great galaxies, he's filling his drinking cup first. Oh, oh, oh. That's not water. Scratch knows something is terribly wrong. Quickly, the caveman ties a knot in the end of the snorkel hose. Now, as Destructo pumps the explosive fuel through the hose, it's trapped inside 
bigger and bigger the hole swells until inside the tanker Destructo sneers with glee. The gauge of his cargo tank reads empty. The villain is sure the deadly load has been transferred to the travel lab. So away he speeds. But the spaceman and his deputies have the last laugh this time. Now Squeak takes careful aim, scratch loads the forward launching tube. Destructo's plan has gone wrong, and you can be sure he's pretty burned up about it. Ready? Aim! Fire! <laughs> Prepare for contact, Doctor! And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Fire Bomb! Of all the wonders of Futurian space science, none is more valuable to the people of the universe and Colonel Bleep's fantastic invention, the Futurian robot. One by one, these mechanical marvels have been skillfully trained to master every important duty of modern space life. The master robot Guidex is in full command of busy space station X-1. Control robot Synchro guides all traffic through the Milky Way turnpike. Special mechanical engineers man all interplanetary transportation craft from roaring space trains to small but speedy skyway cars. Step aboard, please. Indeed, without these skillful mechanical men on the job, interplanetary space life would quickly grind to a halt. But there is no need to worry about that, for there is enough high-precision RoboLube in the great Futurian oil well to keep every robot running on perfect schedule forever. Fill me up, please. Yes, my clever mechanical friend. Fill up while you can, for at midnight you shall be dry. <laughs> First, I shall empty your tanks, then this powerful fire bomb is set to explode at 12 to destroy your life-giving oil well. Up, Grizzle, there's work to be done. Sizzling Saturn, Dr. Destructo and his pet gorilla are off to empty the oil tanks and set fire to the Robolube oil well. At Futurian Fire Control Center, a powerful fire detector scans the sleeping sky. Ever alert, for the telltale smell of smoke. Smoke! Great galaxies, Grizzles, fire bomb has exploded on schedule. The Robaloo oil well is a mass of flames. Robot firemen leap to the call. 
But look, this truck show has emptied the tank. The entire brigade is grinding to a halt. The wicked plan is working. The mechanical robots have stopped. There is no one left to put out the fire. Hold everything. Here comes Colonel Bleed with squeak and scratch. They'll put out the fire. But how? The Colonel knows the frosty foam from this supercharge of frigid plutonium 505 will do the job. If it can only be placed directly into the blazing oil shaft. But who could survive those terrible flames? Without delay, the fearless deputies volunteer. But little Squeak is a puppet, made of wood. Surely he cannot go and scratch. But where is Scratch? Oh, no! There on the robot fire truck. It's the caveman himself inside a fireproof fireman suit. <coughs> there he goes, carrying fleet supercharge of foamy, frigid plutonium. He's risking his life to save the priceless robot oil supply. It's working. The flames are dying down. The fire is out. Hooray! And there's good old Scratch, safe and sound in his fireproof fireman suit. And so, for his bravery, the gallant caveman was made honorary chief of the Futurian Robot Fire Brigade. All of which goes to prove that oil's well that ends well. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Hypnotic Helmet. All is peaceful throughout the universe this night until... A mysterious spaceship suddenly speeds towards the planet Earth. Inside, Black Patch the Parrot and the Wicked Black Knight listen as Bruto, the evil black robot, explains his plan. His terrible plan to destroy Colonel Bleed. <laughs> Placed under a hypnotic spell, squeak and scratch, Bleep trusted space deputies will become my helpless slaves. Hey! Under my direction, his beloved friends will destroy the spaceman forever. Hey! We shall at last rule the universe. Hey! 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 Unseen, the spaceship streaks to a stop. In a heavy cloud directly over Bleep's island base. Quickly, the black robot drops two mysterious packages through the entrance hatch of the island's plastic dome. One for Squeak, one for Scratch. From a friend. The next morning, when Bleep speeds off on a moon patrol, the puppet and caveman <coughs> discover the gifts. Two gleaming space helmets with their names in sparkling gold. But wait. Listen to that strange sound coming from each helmet. Sizzling Saturn. It's the very same ticking sound that comes from the mechanical brain of Bruto himself. Hold on, fellas. Don't use those helmets! It's too late! The helmets are locked in place. At once, the ticking sound grows louder, lulling the deputies into a deep, hypnosonic trance. 
story of the ingenious invention Squeak the puppet and Scratch the caveman were ready to try their latest invention the world's first and only snow machine yes with this ingenious homemade contraption the two inventors hope to make it actually snow on tropical Zero Zero Island. Colonel Bleep chuckled silently as he watched his friends proudly prepare for the initial test of their marvelous new machine. While Scratch pumped with all his might, Little Squeak crossed his fingers for luck and pushed the magic button. The machine worked fine, except Instead of snow, down came a cloud of thick black smoke. The inventors agreed a few small changes would be required to make it snow. Bleep was sorry he couldn't wait to see the results of their second try, but it was already blast off time for his morning space patrol. And so, wishing his friends good luck, the spaceman sped off on his tour of duty. But only moments later, high above the earth, the colonel screeched to a halt to listen to a strange space signal. There it was again. Three short blips, three long bleeps, and three more blips. 
This was an urgent SOS. Someone nearby was calling for help. But where was it coming from? And who could it be? Then we spotted a ball-like object racing through space at tremendous speed. This was another test satellite from the planet Earth. And someone or something was calling for help from inside this man-made moon. Meanwhile, back on Zero Zero Island, Squeak and Scratch continued to test their homemade snow machine. Down came a thundering torrent of rain. Then, a shower of giant hailstones. But no snow. Still, the puppet and caveman would not give up. And in desperation, Scratch tossed a box of soap flakes into the contraption. For after all, to a caveman, soap flakes and snowflakes sound and look very much alike. Now when Scratch pumped the handle and Squeak pushed the button, nothing came out at all except hundreds of giant bubbles which drifted up through the dome of their island home. At about the same time, Colonel Bleep sprang open the hatch of the Earth satellite. And to his surprise, out popped a dozen puppy dogs and a dozen kittens. These were the frightened passengers who signaled for help. For unless Bleep could save them, they were doomed to spend the rest of their lives speeding through space. But how could the spaceman possibly get so many dogs and cats safely back to Earth? Then Bleep saw them. Dozens of beautiful floating bubbles from the snow machine. Here was a chance not only to save the animals, but to play a wonderful trick on the great inventors. Quickly, the spaceman popped the dogs and cats into the huge bubbles, which, like Bleep's own space helmet, would protect them on the journey back to Earth. And so it was that Squeak and Scratch were amazed to see the bubbles floating back to Zero Zero Island, each carrying a tiny pup or kitten inside. Yes, this was a great day for the inventor. For although the snow machine did not make it snow, it did make it rain cats and dogs. story of the invisible gorilla just imagine coconut pie every single day it all began when Colonel Bleep discovered a secret way to make a powerful rocket fuel from coconut milk and every nut the Colonel drained for milk also contain the makings for a scrumptious pie for Squeak and Scratch. Jug after jug of fresh coconut flight fuel now lined the shelves of Bleep's laboratory. And with Zero Zero Island's big supply of coconuts, the Colonel was sure his space scooter squadron would never be grounded for lack of this super fuel. But unknown to Bleep, 
the wicked Dr. Destructo had somehow learned of the Colonel's discovery. Already, the evil doctor has thought up a plan for destroying every single coconut on the island. His secret weapon is Grizzle, the trained gorilla, the hungriest coconut-eating beast in the whole wide universe. For seven days, Grizzle has not been fed. And for seven days, the starving gorilla has dreamed of nothing but his favorite food, coconuts. Thousands and thousands of luscious, sweet coconuts. Come, Grizzle. Are you hungry, Grizzle? <laughs> Good boy, Grizzle. Today, you will eat every juicy coconut on Zero Zero Island. Do you understand, Grizzle? Good boy. But first, we must make you invisible. Aha. Good. Now, off you go. And remember, eat every coconut on the island, Grizzle. The next morning, there was serious trouble on Bleep's Island base. Poor Scratch had found only one coconut in the whole jungle. This meant an end to Bleep's rocket fuel discovery. And even worse, to Squeak and Scratch, it meant no more of those luscious coconut pies. With great care, Bleep drained each precious drop of milk from the last remaining coconut and quickly processed it into rocket fuel. With equal care, the puppet prepared their last coconut pie. But in a flash, the pie was gone, leaving a bewildered scratch holding the empty plate. Sure that the caveman had greedily eaten the whole pie himself, the colonel ordered Scratch to sit in the corner and not move until the clock chimes two. While the obedient Scratch sat perfectly still, serving out his punishment, Bleep and Squeak were unaware that an invisible gorilla was the real thief. Then, <laughs> Grizzle struck again. Still, the caveman sat in motionless silence, faithfully following Bleep's unfortunate command. Now, all this activity had given Grizzle a powerful appetite, and he sped off at once to Bleep's laboratory workshop, where he smelled the delicious aroma of coconut milk. At that very moment, Scratch's punishment ended, and the caveman arrived on the scene just in time to see the hungry Grizzle guzzle down jug after jug of Bleep's powerful bubbling rocket fuel. Scratch blinked in awe. So this was the culprit that caused all the trouble. Silently, the caveman strikes back. Sending Grizzle and his explosive payload straight as a flaming arrow back to his wicked master. Yes, Scratch has saved the day. So for faithful obedience and heroic service, Bleep promised him a reward. And what prize do you think the caveman chose? Why, a delicious coconut pie, of course. Galaxy 9, 
lies the lily pad kingdom of Aqualand. Here, the friendly frogmen of this watery world <coughs> dive deep to gather the gleaming giant pearls found only on Aqualand's ocean floor. But suddenly, an evil shadow looms into view. Sizzling Saturn! It's Colossal! The giant killer whale! The terrified divers flee for their very lives! With the monster's gaping jaws only inches away, Colossal is certain to catch them soon and live! Urgent SOS beams out from terror-stricken Aqualand, but can help arrive in time. Back on Earth, Colonel Bleep picks up the urgent call for help and flashes instructions to squeak and scratch in Cruiser 1. Attention, Cruiser 1. Monstrous killer whale threatens Aqualand. Pick up Moonlight Dive Bomber Squadron at Lunar Base 7. Launch all-out attack at once. Away they streak. Up ahead, the Moonlight pilots prepare their small but deadly diving craft inside the launching tube ring, and then await pickup by the cruiser. Stand by for pickup. Three, two, one. Contact. They're off to sink or swim in a fight to the finish with colossal dreaded terror of the deep. In only minutes, the cruiser arrives over the target on Aqualand. <coughs> Away, all scooters.
And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Night of Death! On a dark and stormy planet in outer space stands the tumble-down stronghold of the treacherous Black Knight of Pluto. Here, the villain meets in secret session with Black Patch, the space pirate, and the sinister Black Robot. Hail, O Knight of the Double Cross! Quickly, the wicked leader reveals his plan for victory over Colonel Bleep. First, they will capture Squeak and Scratch, then trick the spaceman into exhausting his precious supply of powerful futomic energy. Colonel Bleep will then be like putty in my hand. Deputies Squeak and Scratch streak over Pluto on their midday space patrol. Attention, space deputies. A fire-breathing dragon has kidnapped the beautiful princess of Pluto. Begin rescue search immediately. Hold everything! Look, there below, those puffs of smoke. Could that cave be the lair of the wicked dragon? Help! Help! Save me! It is! The deputies plunge to the rescue! Help! 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 Sizzling Saturn! That's not the beautiful princess! That's no dragon either! Stop, fellas! It's a deadly ambush! and scratch. 
scratch or signaling the colonel just in time. Now, Bleep whirls about and sends the shattering blast deep inside the cave. <laughs> and Scratch were saved. And the evil Black Knight and his partners in crime learned that not even a fire-breathing monster can compare with Colonel Bleep's powerful butomic energy. <laughs> And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Lunar Luger. It's midnight on zero, zero, one. One by one. The lights in Scratch's cave, Squeak's cozy cottage, and Colonel Bleep's secret laboratory. Blink off for the night. Only the watchful eye of the powerful radar scope remains on guard. But on distant Pluto, far beyond the range of the radar scope, Dr. Destructo's fortress stronghold is a glow with eerie light. Inside, this crafty culprit gloats with glee as he tests his newly invented Lunar Luger. Destructo is sure his super weapon, with its forceful ray of condensed moon power, will prove more than a match for Bleep's mighty butomic energy. <laughs> At last, I have harnessed the power of the moon. Tomorrow, Bleep and his space deputies will die. At dawn, Zero Zero Island springs to life. Space deputies, Fall in. Space deputies, man your craft. Space deputies, blast off. Once again, Squeak and Scratch are off on their morning space patrol. Little do they know, however, that at this very moment, the sinister saucer of the evil Destructo lurks in ambush only minutes away. And look, this time the villain is armed with his powerful lunar Luger, sizzling Saturn. Fleet's deputies won't have a chance. Stop, fellas. Go back. This is no ordinary weapon. Stop! Stop! It's too late. The scooter is dead and the Structo's got sight. <laughs> Squeak and scratch are trapped. Their space scooter is locked in space by moon power. Aha, my friends. You are now in my power. Moon power. With one more blast, I shall guide your space scooter to smash it on the mountains of the moon far below. Unknown to the villain, however, while he bragged of his super weapon, Little Squeak had...
switched on the spaceophone, and Colonel Bleep heard every word. You are in my power, moon power. Moon power? <laughs> Bleep speeds to the rescue. <laughs> but is the Colonel's futonic energy supply strong enough to free his helpless friends? <laughs> Already squeak and scratch are plunging headlong towards certain death. Hurry, Bleep! <laughs> Hurry! <laughs> there they are. <laughs> With terrible aim, Bleep fires a mighty bolt of futonic energy. <laughs> he did it! He stopped the fall! But Destructo's Lunar Luger barks again. <laughs> now Bleep replies. They're free! Teutonic <laughs> energy has won again! Hooray! But Colonel Bleep knows that war with Destructo must go on. Must go on. Until this master criminal and his deadly lunar luger are destroyed forever. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Manhunt on the Moon. Interplanetary investigator Colonel Bleak and his space deputies, Squeak and Scratch, floated to a stop just above the surface of the moon. They were searching for some trace of the terrible Dr. Destructo among the thousands of crater marks that dotted the strange landscape. To Bleep, it appeared that these craters might have been caused by thousands of meteors crashing down at terrific speed. But many scientists believe the strange markings are the scars of a tremendous bubbling action caused when hot internal gases escaped to the outer surface back when the moon was soft and pliable. Scratch, however, imagined the many craters had been left long ago by violent volcanic eruptions, similar to those the planet Earth had experienced from time to time. Then, something below caught their attention. Glistening in the sun at the very top of Mount Leibniz, the moon's highest visible peak, stood a strange tower. It closely resembled the man-made structure called the Eiffel Tower, which is a familiar landmark on Earth, in the city of Paris. Diving down for a closer look, Bleep and his friends found a huge reflecting mirror with a powerful lens attached to the top of the tower. This had been the moon power device used by Dr. Destructo not long ago to guide the runaway rocket straight down toward Zero Zero Island. While Bleep and Squeak searched for clues, Scratch peered through the powerful lens for a telescopic view of the Earth beyond. But as he looked, he froze with horror. For there, with one foot on South America and the other on South Africa, stood a tremendous black giant. Actually, it was only a highly magnified shadow of the caveman himself projected nearly a quarter of a million miles through space by the light of the moon. But the sight was so terrifying, the frightened Scratch fell over backwards and tumbled down to almost certain death on the rocks below. Squeak looked up just in time to see his helpless companion falling straight down upon the puppet himself. Squeak couldn't move or even call for help. He could only cover his eyes and wait for the bone-splintering crash. He waited for the end, and waited, and waited, but nothing happened. Then, Squeak opened his eyes just as Scratch gently floated into his arms. For you see, the gravity pull of the moon is only one-sixth as great as Earth. So, Scratch almost floated down that great distance like a feather to land unharmed in the arms of little Squeak. Suddenly, Bleep... 
urgently signaled his companions. He had found still another clue. At the base of the tower was a scrap of notebook paper covered with the hasty scrawls of Dr. Destructo's own hand. To the others, it was only a jumble of strange symbols. But to Bleep, this was a flight plan. Destructo's own flight plan. And it told the Colonel exactly where this master culprit had gone. It would take courage to follow this truck dole now, for Bleep knew this place, knew it too well, and he was sure that fantastic terrors would be waiting out there. centuries, the moon of planet Earth was the happy home of the hard-working moon mites, tiny lunar farmers who harvested crop after crop of tasty, tender moon mushrooms. Here the moon mites lived a very carefree life until one day the men of Earth, who knew nothing of the existence of the moon mites, shot a powerful atomic test missile straight for the moon. The moon mites faced sure destruction, but just in time, Colonel Bleep and his deputies streaked to the rescue. Quickly, the colonel teutomagized a stack of mushrooms. Then, Deputy Squeak tossed the tiny moon mites aboard. And Deputy Scratch rocketed them off to safety. But now, the moon mites are without a home. So Colonel Bleep has been assigned to escort the little creatures to a place far beyond the reach of Earthmen's deadly rocket. Little does the Colonel know, however, that even greater danger lies ahead. For at this very moment, they're being watched by the evil eye of Black Patch, the terrible space pirate. Shiver me timber, mateys! There's a swarm of flying moonlights dead ahead. Blimey, every one is worth a fortune as a slave in the red pepper mines of Pluto. After a mateys, I'll be the richest pirate in the universe. Great galaxies! Will Colonel Bleep discover this new threat in time? Can he save the moonlights from a life of slavery? Silently, the pirate galleon closes in. The evil pirate, vacuum in hand, prepares to sweep up the unsuspecting victims from under the very nose of Colonel Bleep. Pepper mines are dead ahead. Nor 
where we'll swap our cargo of moonlight for their weight in glittery gold. But the gleeful black patch is unaware the powerful scratch has sprung open a porthole. One by one, the moon mites leap out and are quickly picked up by Colonel Bleep, who is trailing the galleon. Just as the pirate ship arrives at the pepper mines, Scratch locks the porthole back in place. And now, Squeak, the puppet, takes command. Black Patch and his bloodthirsty crew are prisoners in their own trap. Now, see here, mateys. Have a heart. Oh, Black Patch was a meaning no harm. Which was all a joke. Just to spice up a pirate's dismal, dreary day. Honest, mateys. Okay, Black Patch. If it's spice you want, then try a dash of pepper. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Prehistoric Present. The morning sun beamed down on the entrance of the cave home of... <laughs> Scratch world's only living caveman. Scratch, as you know, <sighs> fell asleep several thousand years ago. And probably would have been sleeping yet. But the first atomic test explosion <laughs> blew him right out of the past and into the present. And now with his friends, Colonel Bleak <laughs> and Little Squeak, the caveman's life is filled with exciting adventures, wonderful adventures. Like the time Scratch <laughs> smelled smoke and saw a fiery glow inside his cave. He dashed inside <laughs> to find Squeak with a giant birthday cake, all aglow with candles, just for Scratch. The happy caveman jumped for joy and made a very special wish when he blew out all the candles. And then, Scratch felt sad. And big tears <coughs> dripped from his eyes. For he felt sure that his birthday wish could never, ever possibly come true. For Scratch had wished to return once again to his prehistoric past, to play again with Dimples, his lovable pet dinosaur. Yes, Scratch missed Dimples very much. And now he would never see her again. But to Colonel Bleak, nothing seems impossible. And so the spaceman's birthday gift to Scratch was a golden key. The key to Scratch's wish come true, for this was the key that operated Colonel Bleak's Futomic Time Transformer. That fantastic invention which made it possible to transport anything or anybody anywhere in time or space. Quickly, the caveman hopped aboard and Bleep adjusted the time controls to allow Scratch to visit for one hour with Dimples back thousands of years in the past. Squeak turned the golden key. As Scratch waved farewell, then the whole contraption suddenly vanished as it raced backwards, carrying the caveman through time. Then, suddenly, 
there he was, back home again with Mama Scratch, Papa Scratch, and Dimples. Dear old Dimples, Scratch's pet dinosaur. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the present, Bleep and Squeak watched the dials and signals of the Futomic Time Transformer as the minutes ticked by. The hand of the clock was rapidly approaching the time for Scratch's scheduled return. There's the signal. Now Bleep throws the reverse control switch. But Scratch is having such a wonderful time, he forgets to climb aboard, and the machine returns empty. Quickly, the Colonel sends it racing back. And again it returns. But this time, with Dimples. Now Bleep is worried. For only enough Teutonic power remains in the machine for one more try. Scratch must come back this time, or he will be left forever in the past. Once again, Bleep throws the switch. And just in time, Scratch jumps aboard the Teutonic transport, and now he's really on his way back. But wait, the power's beginning to fade, and the years are clicking off slower and slower, until finally, the machine stops dead, somewhere in the past century. Poor Scratch is stuck back in the 1800s. Now he'll never get back. But wait, what's that strange noise? And that, it's getting louder and louder, closer and closer. But what can it be? Why, it's Scratch, riding back from the 19th century in an early automobile, towing the rundown time transformer behind him. And so, Scratch had a wonderful birthday. And now he's back with his friends again. You can just bet that no one else in the whole wide world ever got a pet dinosaur for a present. Yes, it's fun to dream about the past. But for real fun, there's no time like the present. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Scratch and his feathered friend. Interplanetary space investigator, Colonel Bleep. And his deputies, Squeak and Scratch roared with Teutonic speed past the black planet Pluto, over and under the green planet Neptune and Uranus, through the glowing yellow rings of Saturn, and then screeched to a halt, directly over the 12th moon of Jupiter. Somewhere below, on this mysterious satellite, lurked the evil Dr. Destructo, master criminal of outer space. This time, Bleep meant to track him down for sure. To Scratch, the caveman, landing here was like stepping back into the dim past of his childhood, because this forgotten world was inhabited by the same prehistoric monsters which roamed the Earth when Scratch was just a boy, back in the days of the dinosaurs. Anxiously, Bleep searched the horizon with his butomic visual scanner and quickly spotted Destructo's hideaway, high on a rocky cliff beyond. At twilight, they would attack and capture the villain in his lair. Meanwhile, Squeak settled down on a cozy bed of soft green ferns to rest until zero hour. And Scratch, remembering his childhood, went happily off in search of a tasty prehistoric egg, a luscious treat he had not enjoyed for several thousand years. The caveman was at home here. And no beast, regardless of size, ferociousness, or cunning, could frighten him or keep him from finding that egg. And then, Scratch saw it, the biggest, roundest, most delicious egg there ever was. 
But when Scratch reached to pick up his prize, it suddenly began to shake and rattle and roll round and round. The caveman dove under a feather to hide just as the great egg shattered. And there stood a strange bird, a super bird, far larger than Scratch himself. Thinking the top of Scratch's head was another egg, the bird tried to peck it open too. And when Scratch leaped up, the bird felt sure this was his newly hatched brother, and he began to hug the caveman joyfully. Meanwhile, as twilight gathered, Leap and Squeak silently closed in on the entrance to Dr. Destructo's secret cave. A strange glow from within meant the mad scientist was busy at work. And his capture looked easy, if only they could be quiet enough to surprise him. But just at that moment, Squeak accidentally squeaked, alerting the huge vampire bat which stood guard at the mouth of the cave. The evil creature lunged towards them. At the same time, Bleep aimed a blast of futomic energy at the beast. But too late, he realized that the long trip to Jupiter's 12th moon had completely discharged his futomic storage battery. Now, the great bat swooped upward, clutching the helpless pair. But Scratch, riding his prehistoric superbird, had also seen the bat. And in an instant, the huge bird, with the caveman at the controls, dived down towards the monster for a fight to the finish. Then a head-on crash. Then the bat spinning down straight towards the entrance of Destructo's hideout. While Bleep and Squeak floated to safety on two great feathers. Yes, Scratch and Superbird had saved the day. But there was no time now to check on the fate of Destructo because Superbird was waiting to fly them back to the planet Futura where a new supply of Teutonic energy and another exciting assignment would be waiting for Colonel Bleep of the Interplanetary Space Command. story of Shadows of Suspicion. Bleep, Squeak, and Scratch spent many happy days at their home base on Earth, Zero Zero Island. The Colonel kept busy with new experiments in his lab. Scratch spent many happy hours digging away in the garden and Squeak played with his favorite toy, a little wooden puppet. Squeak loved this toy, perhaps because he himself was made of choice lumber. A block of delicate white pine for his head and a board of sturdy oak for his body. Yes, little Squeak was really a wooden puppet, but few could have guessed that he was anything other than a real and very natural little boy. For he certainly was full of mischief like most real little boys, as his friends knew too well. Bleep still recalls the shock of dashing about for almost an hour, dodging what he believed to be flashing meteorites, only to discover later that little Squeak had slipped a handful of fireflies into the Colonel's helmet, just for fun. Another time, Bleep awoke from a sound sleep to find himself covered with green and yellow spots, a sure sign of Futurian frog pox. But little Squeak knew that the colorful dots on the spaceman's helmet were just dabs of paint, for the puppet had put them there himself, just for fun. But it was poor Scratch, the good-natured caveman who suffered most from this puppet trickery. More than once, his trusty wooden club had been nailed to the floor. And who can recall how many times a scrumptious coconut pie had a hidden balloon inside, just waiting for poor Scratch's knife or fork. Squeak's favorite prank, however, 
was making shadow pictures on the wall by holding his fingers in front of a bright candle. He would create the shadow of a wolf, then signal for help, and Scratch would dash to the rescue, only to find the puppet rocking with laughter at his joke. The caveman had been fooled by squeak shadow pictures of a giant crab, a monstrous crocodile, and a ferocious ostrich. At last, Scratch had vowed never to be tricked again. Then, one day, it happened. Bleep had blasted off for a closer look at a storm cloud approaching the island. Scratch was inside his cave, carving a new wooden club, and Squeak was fishing in the brook by the waterfall. At the first raindrop, Squeak dashed for the nearby shelter of Scratch's cave. Now, no one had noticed that a giant tropical spider had just spun its huge web across the cave entrance, and poor Squeak <coughs> ran smack into this deadly trap. Scratch looked towards the doorway to see the puppet snared in the giant web, but as he watched, the stormy sky outside made the, his poor struggling friend look like just another of Squeak's own shadow tricks. And Scratch <laughs> returned to his club carving, determined not to be fooled again, and never dreaming that his little friend was really in trouble this time. Poor Squeak shook with terror as the giant spider appeared ready to devour him. It would be all over in a flash. And it was, but the flash was from a powerful bolt of Bleep's futomic energy. Yes, the colonel had returned just in time to save the puppet. And so a very frightened Squeak, now safe in the arms of his friends, promised faithfully never to call for help unless he was in honest to goodness real trouble. For now he knows that a foolish trick can sometimes cost a life. story of Squeak and the Terrible Termite. In his cave on Zero Zero Island, Scratch awoke each morning just as the first sunbeam peeked through. He would yawn, then reach for his trusty wooden club to be sure it was ready for the day's adventures. Colonel Bleep in his laboratory was up early, just in time to silence that noisy bird in the wooden clock before it could finish its morning call. Because in his little dream house, Squeak would still be sound asleep in his cozy bed. This morning, however, things began in a very different way. When Scratch yawned and reached for his wooden club, it was missing. Only a few crumbs of sawdust remained. When Bleep got up to silence the cuckoo clock, something was very wrong indeed. Only the metal springs, gears, and numerals were left. Every wooden part of that clock had vanished, even the cuckoo. Bleep and Scratch rushed to awaken Squeak, but the little puppet's bed was empty, and Squeak himself was nowhere to be found. The only clue was a trail of unusual footprints, which Bleep recognized immediately. Only yesterday in his lab, the colonel had seen those very same footprints, only much smaller in size. Following the tracks, he had discovered a tiny wood-eating insect called a termite. But Bleep was amazed to find that this particular termite had traces of interplanetary wood dust on its wings. Something strange was going on. Somehow, by some strange power, a tiny termite had grown overnight into a giant monster. There was no doubt, a wood-eating monster of tremendous size was on the loose. Poor Squeak, the little wooden puppet, had been captured by a giant termite. 
A terrible termite. The colonel sped into action. Using futomic energy, he quickly made for scratch a brand new club. Not of wood, but of solid lead, one of the heaviest, most malleable metals commonly used by man. Thus armed, Bleep and Scratch hurriedly followed the footprints to rescue their little friend. Suddenly, they were upon him. There was the great insect sprinkling salt on the poor wooden puppet who lay bound on a huge platter. This was a time for quick thinking and fast action. With caveman strength, Scratch molded his heavy but malleable metal club into a statue that looked exactly like Squeak. And as the termite turned to put away the salt, Scratch quickly substituted the metal statue for the real puppet. And at the same time, Bleep charged the statue with a bolt of... Futomic lightning. Then the terrible termite turned and in one hungry gulp swallowed the charged statue. With a howl of pain, the monster leaped into the sea to cool off. But the weight of that heavy metal statue pulled him down, 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 50 fathoms under. So once again, peace was restored to Zero Zero Island. And while Scratch fashioned a new wooden club and Colonel Bleep repaired the cuckoo clock, little Squeak snoozed soundly in his cozy little bed. Tired from his exciting adventure and completely unaware that even greater danger lay ahead. story of Test of Friendship. Ordinarily, Squeak the Puppet and Scratch the Caveman were the very best of friends. It was Scratch who had carved Squeak's favorite toy, a wonderful wooden hobby horse. And Squeak was forever surprising his caveman buddy with a scrumptious coconut pie. Together, as space deputies and Colonel Bleep's scooter squadron, they shared many thrilling adventures as they fought to maintain right and justice throughout the vast galaxies of the universe. Yes, we and Scratch were more than just good friends. They were almost like brothers. Until today, like a bolt from the blue, the Daily Mail rocket arrived with a special delivery message from the Futurian High Command. <laughs> A message which threatened to shatter forever this wonderful friendship. To Colonel Bleep, Commander, Zero Zero Island. Squeak and Scratch are tied for award as Space Deputy of the Year. You must choose the winner by dawn tomorrow. Space Deputy of the Year? This is important. For the one cadet chosen each year wins his own personal merit flag to prove that he is the finest space deputy of them all. There is no friendship now. Squeak knows if it wasn't for Scratch, the winner's flag would be his. And the caveman knows only Squeak stands in the way of his victory. This is the showdown. There can be only one winner and it's gonna be me! For the rest of the day, neither the puppet nor the caveman have one single word to say to one another. That night, little Squeak lay awake, recalling his many adventures of the past year. There was that time on Jupiter's twelfth moon when he and Bleep were captured by Dr. Destructo's giant vampire bat. But wait! It was Scratch! and his mighty super bird who saved them from a terrible fate. Oh well, what about the time he was frozen in solid ice by the terrible ice demons of Saturn? Why again, it was Scratch who came to the rescue with an army of marching penguins. And when Black Patch forced him to walk the plank, 
It was Scratch who routed the pirate band with a pilgrim blunderbuss. Maybe Scratch is the one who deserves to win the merit flag after all. Meanwhile, in his darkened cave, Scratch is thinking of his year's adventures. Could he ever forget the time he was swallowed alive by a giant sea serpent? Say, come to think of it, it was little Squeak who was first to the rescue. And that day on the moon when the caveman slipped and fell from Destructo's giant observation tower. Who saved him then? Why, his puppet pal. And who could have shown more courage and valor than little Squeak? when he faced the powerful Black Knight alone on the field of battle. It was hard to believe, but perhaps Squeak should be chosen Space Deputy of the Year. At dawn the next morning, Fleet found two letters under his door. One from Squeak and one from Scratch. The puppet had written, Scratch deserves to win. And the caveman had written, Squeak deserves to win. It's time to announce the winner. Squeak and Scratch snap to attention. Then, the space cadets blink in surprise. For instead of a name on the flag of honor, there is only a huge letter S. But does this initial S stand for squeak or scratch? No one knows, not even Colonel Bleak. For how could anyone choose just one winner from two such brave and unselfish cadets? And so it was that the caveman and the puppet shared the winner's flag. And once again, squeak and Scratch were more than just good friends. They were almost like brothers. Stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of the treacherous parrot. At last, it was finished. The beautiful necklace of pink seashells which Scratch had made for his dear old mother. Yes, this was Mama Scratch's birthday. Now clutching his gleaming gift, the caveman hops aboard Bleep's Butomic Time Machine. It is this wonderful invention that will carry Scratch back through time and space to his boyhood home. The hatch closes. The power goes on. And away he goes. Back through the countless centuries he speeds to arrive in the time of the Stone Age. And there they are. Papa Scratch, just as handsome as ever. And Mama Scratch, looking even lovelier with her beautiful pink seashell necklace. They all spend a wonderful day together, but soon it is evening and Scratch speeds back once more to his friends on Zero Zero Island. Unknown to the caveman, however, his every move has been carefully watched by Black Patch, the villainous one-eyed leader of the bloodthirsty space pirates. At last, Black Patch has learned the secret of Colonel Bleep's time machine, and now he has a plan, a plan to capture Colonel Bleep alive. And so, at the stroke of midnight, the hatch of the time machine closes again. Then almost as quickly as it vanished, it returns. 
carrying not one passenger, but two. Bleep awoke with a start. There was trouble in the air. He could feel it. Then, sure enough, he found it. To Colonel Bleep, surrender to me at the top of the moon, or Mama Scratch dies at the hour of noon. Black Patch. Yes, it was true. Black Patch had kidnapped poor Mama Scratch, and only Bleep could save her. Without delay, the Colonel speeds off for the moon to willingly surrender his life in exchange for Mama Scratch's freedom. Minutes later, Squeak and Scratch also discovered the kidnapper's terrible note. But Scratch found something else the spaceman had missed. A trail of gleaming pink seashells. Seashells from Mama Scratch's birthday necklace. Somehow, Mama had managed to leave this clue for her faithful son to follow. And so, off they went in hot pursuit, tracking the seashell trail deep into the dense jungle. At that very moment, high on the moon, Bleep spotted the pirate band. Listening carefully, the colonel learned this was a treacherous trap. The evil Black Patch had no intention of freeing Mama Scratch at all, even if Bleep does surrender. In fact, at this instant, Mama is back on Zero Zero Island, staring into the muzzle of a powerful pirate cannon. At exactly noon, the scorching rays of the sun will ignite the cannon's fuse, and Mama's life will be lost in one blinding flash. Yes, at last, Bleep knew the terrible truth. Back toward Zero Zero Island, he streaked. But was there still time? Good grief, it's already too late. The fuse of the cannon has burst into flame. But look up above. It squeak and scratch. But what can they do? Only seconds remain. From high above, Bleep sees the whizzing cannonball streak straight for the top of the moon to land in the midst of the startled pirate gang. And so, Mama Scratch was saved. And you can bet she will never forget the day a birthday necklace of pink seashells and the courageous action of her boy and his friends saved her from a terrible fate. It was certainly true. No mother anywhere ever had a more wonderful son. Bye-bye, Mama. Give our love to Papa Scratch. Now stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of the treacherous trio. On a dark and lonely moon far out in space, three powerful villains of the underworld meet in secret session. Black Patch, the space pirate, the Black Knight of Pluto, and the sinister black robot have banded together in a fearsome alliance to plot the destruction of Colonel Bleep. Hear me out, mateys. There's but one way to dispose of this air, Colonel, and that's for pirate treachery. Ho, 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 never! Only my superior battle skills can conquer the spaceman from Futura! Oh, idiots! 
Only an ingenious mechanical brain like my own can outwit the clever fleet. A vast, you blasted varmints. My scheme cannot fail. We attack at dawn. Hooray! Together we'll hoist the Jolly Roger over Zero Zero Island. Hooray! Bleep and his deputies will be destroyed forever. Hooray! At daybreak, a formation of three deadly space subs streaks through the universe. Reaching planet Earth, they dive headlong into the briny deep to arrive unseen beneath the blue lagoon of Zero Zero Island, headquarters for Colonel Bleep. Patiently, the space pirate scans the island through his powerful periscope until, at last, ahoy, mateys! Lars Little Squeak himself, victim number one! Help! Help! What's that? Help! Help! Why, it's Scratch, stranded alone in the deepest part of the Blue Lagoon. In a flash, the puppet streaks to the aid of his helpless buddy. Stop, Squeak! It's a trap! That's not Scratch at all, only a dummy! Aha! It's too late! Squeak is the prisoner of the black robot. Stand fast, you lovers. Here's victim number two. Oh, no! Help! Help! This time, the caveman is tricked by the same deadly scheme. Now, Scratch is a prisoner of the black knight. Can nothing stop this terrible treachery? Ahoy, Colonel Bleep! Surrender to me! Or squeak and scratch die at the count of three! This is terrible! Bleep must surrender or squeak and scratch are done for! One! The Colonel is desperate for a plan. A powerful blast of futomic energy would dispose of the villains but the lives of his space deputies would also be lost. Kill! Time is running out. Only one chance remains. A triple-powered, reverse-frequency, supercharged bolt of frigid plutonium 505 might do the trick. But can Bleep generate enough super-energy in time? Three! the entire lagoon is frozen into solid ice. Quickly, Bleep rescues his frozen deputies. Now the colonel strikes again. A powerful blast of atomic energy melts the ice into a sea of boiling water. The culprits flee for their very lives. And in no time at all, Squeak and Scratch are thawed out just as good as new. Yes, Colonel Bleep had made it pretty hot for the three cold-blooded monsters of the Blue Lagoon. And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Tunnel in Space! The Wonder Rocket Travel App speeds through space past the red world of Mars and into the belt of asteroids, gateway to the giant planet Jupiter. Inside the spaceship, Bleep and his crew prepare to land. Cut off power circuits. 
Roger. Activate landing generators. Roger. Set gyro governing dial. Roger. 50 leagues from touchdown. 25 leagues. 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown. They've arrived. Jupiter welcomes you. Step aboard, please. Squeak and scratch peas in wonder as they speed to Space Command headquarters. Jupiter City is the busiest spaceport in the solar system. Rockets depart regularly for every point in the galaxy. Every point except one. No spacecraft can safely navigate the flaming meteor belt surrounding Septa, Jupiter's seventh moon. And so Colonel Bleep has arrived to supervise the construction of a gigantic space tunnel which will span this hazardous area. Through this protective tube, spaceships will travel in safety. No longer will the deadly shower of flaming meteors be a menace to space travel. Work on the project begins immediately. Under the Colonel's careful supervision, an expert crew of Jupiter robot engineers assemble the framework of the tunnel section. According to plan, the travel app provides power to carry each section into proper position while Squeak and Scratch guide its travel using their tiny space scooters like small pilot boats steering an ocean liner to port. At a given signal, release cable, the scooter pilots cut off their lines and dive for the safety of the tunnel for protection against the crashing meteors. Section after section is guided into place, each connecting to the other, until only one section remains. Carefully, the scooter cadets guide its course as the travel app builds up power to slam the section into place. Space scooters, release cables. Scratch is free. Into the tube he dives. But little Squeak's cable is jammed. Again and again, the puppet pours on power, but the cable will not break loose. Bail out, Squeak. Wait before it's too late. Uh -oh. Run, fella, run! Here come the meteors! Poor Squeak has the chance! But wait, what's that? Why, it's Scratch, and he's flying upside. alley -oh, he's got him! But the caveman can't reach the controls in this position. They're headed deeper into the meteor shower. They've got to turn back, but how? Now stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of War in Robot Land. This is wonderful Zero Zero Island, Colonel Bleep's great headquarters here on Earth. Now as twilight fades, 
The lights in Scratch's cave, Squeak's cozy cottage, and the Colonel's laboratory. Blink off for the night. Silently, the powerful radar scope scans the darkened skies, ready to signal the outbreak of trouble anywhere in space. There it is. Red alert. Red alert. Scramble. <laughs> Colonel Bleep, Squeak, and Scratch are off again, for there is terrible trouble indeed on the distant planet Robot Land. Here is a strange world of mechanical men, ruled by the master robot, Romax. From his closely guarded tower, Romax guides the movements of the robot workers below. In this giant factory, the mechanical men of Robot Land skillfully build the great machines needed for the peaceful progress of the universe. Disguised as a friendly robot, the wicked Dr. Destructo has entered the guarded tower. He pulls the switch of the master machine and instantly all work is stopped. Then quickly, with a mysterious power of his own, the evil doctor starts the robots again, working faster than ever before. But now, instead of building machines for peace, the factories rapidly grind out a deadly fleet of powerful space tanks, which Destructo plans to use to conquer the universe. Arriving at last, Colonel Bleep quickly orders Squeak and Scratch to dash for cover on the ground below, while Bleep prepares to face Destructo's mighty armada alone. Doctor orders the attack. The mighty colonel stands his ground. Now Destructo steps up the pace. A steady stream of the deadly robot weapons pours onto the firing line.
And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... The Wicked Web. <laughs> Throughout the universe, many terrible space hazards endanger travel between the planets. Space birds loom dangerously near the orbit of Pluto. Space storms rage outward from the fiery planet Thor, and swirling seas of liquid air infest Galaxy 9. But now, Colonel Bleep has volunteered to survey these hazards one by one and record their exact position on a space map of the galaxy. At this very moment, the Flying Space Laboratory Travel Land is being prepared to blast off on this exciting survey mission. Switch on power circuits. Roger. Activate blast off generators. Roger. Set gyro governing dials. Roger. Stand by for countdown. Three, two, one, zero. They're off. First stop, Pluto, to chart the position of the drifting Spaceberg belt. Ghostly graveyard of spaceships. As bleep, squeak, and scratch near their destination, however, they're spotted by the Black Knight of Pluto. This wicked villain waits like an evil black shadow watching each approaching spaceship, poised to pounce down like a hungry vulture should a ship accidentally collide with a giant spaceberg. Such helpless crash victims are the Black Knight's usual prey. This time, however, he is not content to wait for an accident. Oh, no! The spaceship travel lab is too great a prize to leave to chance. Quickly, he streaks ahead to prepare a deadly ambush. At lightning speed, he flits from spaceberg to spaceberg, spinning a monstrous web of invisible, electromagnetized wire. There can be no escape from this ingenious trap. Now, set for the kill, the Black Knight, like a greedy spider, is ready to pounce upon his unsuspecting victims. Meanwhile, in the lab rocket, Bleep and his crew are busy at their space survey instruments. One by one, the deadly space birds are <laughs> spotted by the futomic radar scope, measured and weighed by the futomic seismoscope, then photographed and charted by the futomic plotoscope. Progress is slow, for the colonel must guide the travel lab with great care through the death traps of the Spaceberg belt. On and on they go, never dreaming that even greater danger lies ahead. Now the Black Knight blinks with excitement. In only seconds, Bleep's giant rocket will be his helpless victim. Closer and closer it comes. But wait, what's that mysterious pattern on Bleep's radar screen? It's an image of the Black Knight's terrible web. For although invisible to the eye, the metallic wire is clearly outlined on Bleep's super-sensitive radar scope. Now the colonel halts the ship and with careful aim sends a powerful bolt of futomic energy surging through the exposed wire. The wicked villain is trapped! And so, thanks to the radar scope, our friends are saved. And the Black Knight is caught in his own trap. And best of all, Bleep's space map now shows a perfect travel lane right through the middle of the Spaceberg Belt.